Welcome. Uh, this is going to be a longer video than normal and uh, it may be confusing, but it's definitely worth sticking with this and you will get it eventually. Uh, this is probably one of the most important things in uh, video games, the idea of how do we spawn uh, uh, new enemies. So these are not re being shifted back to the right hand side of the screen. Uh, when they hit the left hand side of the screen, they're being uh, deleted from the game or destroyed and then new enemies are constantly being spawned or created on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, likewise, when I click somewhere, uh, it'll spawn a load of bullets that randomly fly off in different directions. And then there are all of these collisions that happen as well. So you can imagine how frustrating it would be to try and code all of these enemies individually. Uh, whereas we want to have a situation where we can just uh, have the game create new enemies whenever we want. So in a way, we're sort of teaching the computer how to uh, make new enemies and uh, teaching it how to make new bullets. Um, you can also spawn power-ups and all sorts of other things. So let's get uh, down into it and um, have a little bit of a look. Um, now, actually, uh, I, had, I was on the bullets there. Um, just so you know, uh, there is a really uh, more advanced way of doing this, which is really not necessary uh, for what we're doing this semester. But just so you know, there's an advanced way of doing this with a thing called a class. Um, I'm not actually going to be doing that, but if you really want to challenge, uh, you go and look at the documentation and uh, and you can do that. However, uh, honestly, I think it's probably nicer and easier just to do it the way we're doing it here. Um, so let's get started and have a look at um, how we can make uh, an enemy and uh, remember that all of these things like init enemies and create enemy if you go to the main function again um, they're just being called in these three functions okay so init runs once at the start of the program and we call init enemies update runs 60 times a second screen redraws whenever it can so in our enemies file we have it in a separate file here uh, what do we actually want to do um, to init the enemies well uh, forget about the first line here. That's just to do with uh, how things look. Um, the most important thing is we're going to make an empty list where all of the enemies are going to be. So enemies equals, and then you have these two uh, square brackets here which indicate uh, a list or it's sometimes called an array. So then we have that list, uh, empty list of enemies. Um, then we have a function that we can call any time in the program called create enemy. Okay, uh, now what the goal of this is to make an enemy object and put it in that list. Okay, so this function, whenever it's called, will make an enemy object and put it in that list. So first of all, uh, let's make an object and we're going to call a make a local object because we don't actually, we, we don't want this, uh, once the object's been put in the list, we don't want this variable enemy with the name enemy to exist anymore outside this function. Um, so we put local. So I just have enemy equals object. It has an X position because they're just moving left and right, but yours might have a Y position. They might have health, all sorts of stuff. And the other thing that's really important is that we have active equals true um, because the way that we're setting this up is once enemies uh, leave the screen or they get shot, um, then active gets set to false and that'll help us delete them. That won't automatically delete them, but it'll help us delete them, okay? So there's creating, creating the enemy. And that can be called, this. I think this gets called on a timer in this program, but yours could be it creates new enemies at the start of the level or, or whatever it is, okay? Now, um, the next thing is, uh, I've got a few uh, things here that then I uh, change uh, that require calculations or new properties to add to the enemy that require calculations so they can't go inside here. I have enemy.sprite equals choose. Now choose is a function from the helpers function. It just returns a random item from a list. Um, so you can import that. Um, uh, so it's choosing a random sprite for the enemy from these this list of sprites. Um, I also have enemy size is rand range. Rand range is another one of my helper functions from that library. Uh, so somewhere between 20 and 28 is going to be the enemy size. Um, enemy dot uh, y is going to be randomly for between the top and the bottom of the screen. So again, I've used this rand range function, which is not built into Micro Studio. It's in the helper functions, um, but it will choose a random number between those two. Uh, speed, we're doing random as well. This all makes uh, the enemies look more realistic because um, they're all coming in at different uh, speeds and different, uh, you see over on the right hand side here, different 
velocities, different heights, y values, etc. So that's what I'm doing in mine. Uh, my enemy is now that I've created is now ready. And then we say enemies, which is the list, remember, dot push and in brackets enemy. Push simply means put the enemy on in the list at the end. That's all that push means. <clears throat> okay, so that's that's the bulk of the work there. That's probably the most important thing um, is to uh, have a function that creates the enemy and puts it in the list. Um, that's the spawning part. Um, now we need to uh, work out how we're going to draw and update all these enemies in the list. And to loop over a list, um, uh, you can ignore the uh, the screen dot draw scale here is simply because I'm getting them to draw the opposite way that the sprite faces. So you can ignore that. Let's just look at this bit here. Loop through the enemies and draw them. Okay, for e in enemies, blah 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 blah. End. Okay. So what this does, this for statement, if I say for something in enemies, this is the list enemies. It's going to do this code. Uh, for every item in the enemies and every item in the enemies is going to be called Whatever I put here so I could put e I could put enemy I could put item e is just easier So it'll first go over the first item in the list or the zeroth item in the list and say screen dot draw sprite e dot sprite e dot x e dot y e dot size etc etc it will then go through the second then the third then the fourth then the fifth then the sixth and it will keep drawing them over and over again uh, three lines of code, easy, hey? Uh, well, maybe not easy to understand, but easy to type at least, which is a good a good start. Uh, same thing with updating them. Uh, so you see here, it says for enemy in enemies. So this time, instead of calling it E, I've called it enemies. All that matters is whatever you call it here when you're in the for statement, you'll have to use inside here to describe each enemy. So how many times will this code in here run inside this for loop? As many times as there are enemies in the list. So here we do the movement, enemy.x minus equals enemy.speed. Uh, this here, if, uh, if enemy.x is less than negative 240 over here, then we set active to false. That's our way of, of uh, deleting the enemy, and I'll show you how to fully delete them in a minute. Then I do the collision detection, and here I do another loop uh, because for every enemy, each enemy needs to then loop through all of the bullets and check whether it's touching any of the bullets. Now you have to be careful because this can end up being hundreds and hundreds of calculations. If you have a hundred enemies and 10 bullets, that becomes a thousand calculations. So just be really, really careful that you don't crash your game. But uh, this for bullet in bullets, um, if it's touching the bullet, Enemy.active equals false, bullet.active equals false, etc. etc. Um, and uh, that'll help us delete it. Now, how do we actually properly get rid of this out of a list? Well, you can get rid of an, uh, an inactive enemy out of your list, uh, but it's probably easier just to make a new empty list. And as we're going through all the enemies here, put ones that are still alive in that new list, if that if that makes sense. Um, so if you, do, by the way, if you don't do this and you're just spawning new enemies all the time and they're just flying off the screen to the left, after 10 or 20 seconds, your game is going to start chugging and then eventually it'll crash because you're still, ha you're gonna have thousands of enemies in that list all getting updated and running collision detection, etc. We need to get rid of the ones that we've marked as active equals false, okay? So I'm creating a, a, a local list called temp, temporary. Then what I'm going to do is in this enemy code for enemy and enemies, underneath everything here, I'm simply going to say, if enemy.active, then temp.push enemy. So if this enemy is active, and I've done that after all the other code, put that in the temp list. And then the final thing I'm going to do in the update function outside of this for loop after it's all finished is I'm simply going to take that temp list and set it as the new enemies list. So any of the enemies that were not active, they don't make the cut, they stay in the old enemy list. 
uh, that we had before. Now you might say that's not deleting them, they're still floating around in the computer. Uh, that's true, however, Micro Studio and most programming languages actually has something called garbage collection. Uh, that means that um, because we've set the name enemies to mean our temp list here, the old enemies list doesn't have a name anymore and the garbage collector will come along and say, oh, this doesn't have a name anymore, it can't be accessed and it will simply get thrown out of the program a couple of frames later and this runs every now and then and, and fixes our program. Now I know all of those are really uh, weird concepts to get your head around but they don't matter so much, just know uh, that we this is good for getting rid of the enemies. Uh, now this is simply, uh, oh it wasn't on a timer, I've simply got a thing here, if random dot next is less than 0 0.1, so random not dot next gives a number between 0 and, and 1, so less than 0 0.1 would be about 10% of the time, once every 10 frames on, act, uh, on average, and then I just create a new enemy uh, and that works that way. So just to go over the basic concepts again, uh, the most important thing to realize is that we are, for anything that you want uh, you to be able to spawn and destroy like enemies or bullets or power-ups, you need a list, uh, you need a function that makes a new one and puts it in the list, and then in your draw enemies and update enemies sprite you need to iterate over or loop over that list with a for loop and do the same thing to every enemy. And with the final uh, idea that uh, while we're updating them, um, we have a in this function a new temp um, list, and uh, at the end of each uh, lot of code that runs for every enemy, we just check is it still active? If it does, we put it in the temp list, list and then we keep the temp list and throw away the enemy list, and the temp list becomes our new enemy list. Um, a lot of stuff to get your head around, but good luck if you need any help, um, I will give you a hand.